Well, an Australian filmmaker hit the headlines today after angering family groups with his plan to auction off the virginities of a young man and woman for a new documentary. Take some young Aussies, throw in the promise of fame and fortune and an auction to sleep with them and you might think you have the ingredients for some tragic reality TV show. Instead, it's the premise for a proposed Australian documentary that supposedly explores the broader views of sexual behaviour in society. It could change my life for the good, it could change my life for the bad, but I'm you know, willing to take that risk. One male and female virgin will each be paid $20,000 and 90% of the winning bid. Not surprisingly, the proposed film has angered many, including the families of the virgins who have signed up to be involved. Yeah, this is, this is not on, this is not on. Just, Leave, just... thank you. Leave. So is this a fascinating new age look at society's perceptions of sex or a low-rent exploitation of two young Australians? And joining us for her thoughts from Melbourne Uni, ethicist Dr Leslie Canold. Welcome back, Leslie. Hello, everyone. So what do you make of all this? Well, I think it's fascinating. I mean, I, I, clearly the, the filmmaker has said that he wants to talk about the commodification of virginity and you can see from all the hubbub that's gone on with this film and also with, you know, the comments that Tony Abbott made a while back about virginity that there's certainly something to talk about. But Leslie, this filmmaker has been forced to do this overseas. He received a letter from Consumer Affairs Victoria saying that what he was proposing sort of constitutes prostitution. So, I mean, what do you, do you say to this? Is that a fair assessment? I don't know, but my own feelings about it is that th the bigger crime, in my view, would be the migrant families because there are stories that come out every once in a while where we have migrant families in Australia who are basically selling off their virgin daughters, and it's always daughters, to the highest bidder, which is essentially them prostituting them for the cost of their virginity. I would much prefer that Consumer Affairs went after them than going after an independent documentary filmmaker. Now, Leslie, family groups, uh, are, as they do, got up in arms about this today. Some of them saying that these young people are being exploited, saying that they're going to regret this later in life. Don't a lot of people regret how they lost their virginity anyway later in life? <laughs> I'm definitely in that camp. But, you know, look, the reality is... The reality is they're over 18. They can make a choice. Nobody guarantees you when you have a freedom to choose you're going to make a good choice. And in fact, we often, the mistakes we make are the things we learn the most from. So we can't stop people making bad choices. We just have to allow them to be free to make the choice. Dr. Leslie, I think your first boyfriend will appreciate that shout out. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it's, 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 you'll, Veronica, you'll keep it between you and me, won't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Veronica's the girl in question. She believes she's going to challenge people's views by doing this. What do you reckon she's going to achieve? Well, we don't really know. I mean, I am absolutely fascinated to hear what Veronica and the young men have to say about what they think is so valuable about their virginity that it's worth 20000 plus. But one interesting thing to point out is that certainly what we're seeing in what is probably an evolving idea about virginity is that it's no longer something that men sort of sell off a woman's virginity and then they keep the cash. So young people are clearly seeing their virginity, if they see it as valuable, as something that they're meant to profit from. Well, always thought-provoking, Dr Leslie Cannell. Thanks for joining us. Thank tonight. you so much for having me. I, I had a lot of difficulty with that. I don't quite know where I stand on that mm. because... When I lost my virginity, I was so naive, I didn't even know what it was I was losing. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go to the next bit, but I, I, I did have to check out to see whether it had. And it, yeah, it had, it had gone all right. But this guy calls himself a documentary filmmaker. He yeah, says that there's well, a purpose to all of this. Yeah, the purpose, I suspect, apart from anything else, or the sort of broader issue of sexual behaviour or something, is what you said. But he, he got our attention, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, he certainly absolutely. got our attention. And the website, by the way, where these people, he's all across university campuses, apparently, looking for these people to put their mm. hand up as well, www.fameandfortune.com.au. Yeah. Lose your virginity and get fame and fortune. It, it raises some issues, I think, about value for money. And normally when people pay for sex, they expect a certain degree of professionalism, I'm not and they're not going to get that in this case. I'm not sure any girl would pay for... Virgin, I'll tell you what, my, my, <laughs> mine was on the shelf for quite a while. I can tell you. Knock <laughs> down Red Spot Special? Yeah, I was giving it away. Anyway, um, look, once the, only chance. <laughs> now, they've organised the girl who's going to be involved, Veronica, but the guy, uh, uh, part of the thing, is still, he's still up. It's still, there's still contenders out mm. there. They haven't, they haven't finalised it. And then they've, they've actually they took video auditions. And uh, I think some of the contenders were maybe a little bit too humble. It's not really a big issue, you know, it's not like my virginity's going to take over the world or my virginity's got a 
A massive weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> no massive weapon there, all right? Yep. I, I hope we never report the story that a man's virginity has taken over the world. 